All right. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. We'll just take a couple of minutes here to let people join. Um, if you are joining, feel free to drop into the chat where you're coming from today. Uh, maybe what county and anything you want to share, introduce yourself. Right. We'll just take a couple minutes here. All right. Yeah, few we're spread out already. We've got Tehama, Sonoma. Susanville, welcome everyone. Just take maybe one more minute and I'll get started. Um, yeah. All righty. Well, uh, I imagine people will keep trickling in, and that's totally fine. Uh, but let's get started. We have a lot of ground to cover. Um, uh, so welcome, everyone. My name is Sarah Tiffany, and I am the Director of Ecological Farming at the Community Alliance with Family Farmers, also known as CAF. Um, we are hosting this webinar, which is an informational webinar because CAF is one of many technical assistance providers that is providing assistance to farmers and ranchers wanting to apply to the 2024 Healthy Soils Program. Um, I want to be clear that all of the information presented here is to the best of our knowledge based on what CDFA has shared with us, as well as our, um, as well as our experience as technical assistance providers for this program. Um, I want to just name that uh, if there are mistakes made, please call them out and we will we will look to correct them. Uh, we are still learning ourselves uh, every year this program goes on, but we will present this information as best we can to help you prepare for applying to Healthy Soils or help you decide if you want to apply. Um, and uh, again, uh, CAF is one of many technical assistance providers. There is likely one uh, near the county you live in. So if you have existing relationships, um, one of the resources we're going to be sharing at the end here and emailing out is where you can find a technical assistance provider that can help you out. Um, and uh, just to clarify, technical assistance providers do not we're not part of the state government. We're an independent organization. CAF is a nonprofit uh, that many of you may know about. Um, just to give you a quick idea, we have all kinds of different programs to support farmers uh, from farm to market to um, farmer services, which includes organic transition work and food safety support. Um, as I mentioned, I work with the ecological farming team at CAF, and we do a lot of the on-ground imp implementation support for various practices. Um, and part of the work we do is trying to uh, help farmers and ranchers access resources to help them do those practices. So that's where Healthy Soils comes in. Um, just a brief housekeeping, housekeeping tip here. Um, we are going to have lots of time for questions and answers uh, at the end. Uh, please drop all of your questions in the Q&A um, box. So at the bottom of your Zoom screen, it, you'll see it kind of right in the middle at the bottom. It'll say Q&A. Um, drop questions in there. We will be collecting them kind of throughout the presentation and organizing them, kind of grouping them together as it makes sense. Um, and we will answer those questions. 
Uh, for anything tech related, um, if you're having trouble connecting or hearing us or anything like that, or if you have a, a resource that you wanna share with the fellow attendees, please use the chat for that. So the chat is on your bottom, kind of over to the left of your Zoom screen. Um, okay, and um, with that, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, I will also say that um, this webinar is being recorded and we plan to post it on YouTube and share it with everyone after, um, after the presentation. And um, also I will be sharing all of these slides. Um, I'll just, I'm <laughs> on note, I'll ap apologize in advance here. Um, these slides are very, very wordy, and that's just because there's so much information and we wanna be able to share these with you. Uh, so you can go back and look at them when you have questions. Um, so hang in there, ask your questions, feel free to drop in comments. And uh, yeah, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with kind of a, giving some background and context of what the Healthy Souls program is for people who aren't familiar. Um, and uh, we're gonna go over the, the eligibility requirements for the program as well as the 2024 priorities, um, which have been set by CDFA. We're gonna talk about the application process and components uh, and we'll also have a little bit of a live demo of the replan tool, which is um, maybe the most important part of your application and you can start working with it now. Um, and there's also, there's a missing bullet here, but we're also gonna talk about, okay, what happens if you get an HSP award? What are some of the things to look for? How does it work? And what happens if you don't get one? What happens if you either run out of time or, um, or your application is rejected. Um, finally, we have uh, uh, our last slide is a number of links and resources um, of where to find more information, where to find technical assistance, um, and we'll cover that. And lastly, we will have, um, I hope, plenty of time for questions and answers. And as I mentioned, please go ahead and drop those uh, questions into the Q&A box uh, at any time during the webinar. Actually, the sooner you drop them in, the better, because uh, my uh, my coworkers here on the back end are gonna help organize those questions so that we can get through them really efficiently. Okay, so let's jump in here. Um, so the background and context of the Healthy Souls Program. Uh, the Healthy Souls Program has been around since 2017. It is a program that is administered by the California Department of Food and Agriculture, uh, otherwise known as CDFA. And the Healthy Souls program provides direct incentives grants to California farmers and ranchers to implement soil health practices. And we'll get into what those are in just a few minutes. Uh, generally speaking, the grants are three years long and they were paid through a reimbursement structure. The reimbursement structure, the, pay, the actual payment is based on uh, payment rates. They're not based on actual budget costs, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But one thing that is important to note here is that because the, because the grants are set up as reimbursement structures, it means that farmers and ranchers that receive a grant will have to pay for a practice upfront and then be reimbursed for it after the project has been verified. Um, this is just important to name for all of you, you that need to think about that component. Um, and grant award amounts are based on HSP practice payment rates that are established by CDFA. So what you're gonna see um, is that it's a certain amount of money per acre. So for cover crops, it's gonna be X amount of money per acre to uh, to buy seed, to implement the cover crop, to maintain it, to terminate it. Or in the case of compost, for example, it's, it's uh, the payment rate is per ton, per ton of compost applied. The maximum grant award rate for this particular solicitation is $100,000. 
Uh, one thing we'll note with the replan tool, the replan tool is going to actually allow people to build projects that go up to $200,000. But note that you're, you were only allowed to apply for $100,000. So um, just keep that in mind when using the replan tool. Uh, lastly, farmers and ranchers can apply for HSP incentives grant through CDFA, which is the upcoming solicitation opening on January 22nd through February 9th. This is the traditional kind of CDFA HSP application process. Uh, this year, for the first time, there is an additional process for applying for an HSP incentives grant. And that is through something called the HSP, HSP Regional Block Grants. Um, we're going to go into what those two things are, but I'll just note for now, they have different timelines. So, um, so that's something to consider, especially for those that are unsuccessful in this first solicitation period. There will be additional uh, regionally focused opportunities for HSP opening up after CDFA closes their, um, their application system. Um, so more on that later. It's a new thing, so um, just stay tuned. Um, and wanted to note that, um, oh, I'm just getting ahead of myself here. Sorry, hang on a second. Okay, so wanted to know, okay, what are these healthy soils practices we're talking about? Um, for a full list of the HSP practices, and there are many of them, please go to um, CDFA's website. You can click on a document, a link, and we're going to share all of this, by the way. So you can also just wait for these slides and use these links. That's fine. Um, if you click on the request for grant application uh, PDF link, uh, that will give you basically all of the information, in-depth information about the Healthy Soils program this year. Um, at the very end of it, there is something called Appendix A. And Appendix A is a full table with every single Healthy Soils practice that's being funded uh, as part of the Healthy Soils Incentives Grants this year and the associated payment rate for that practice as well as the project verification requirements. So that's gonna tell you what the practices are being included, how much you could potentially get for it, and how you would basically report that you're doing it, how you would comply with the practice for CDFA to meet the requirements. Um, I'll note that those, uh, the, the practice standards for each of these practices are actually based on the Natural Resource Conservation Service practice standards. So those of you who are familiar with NRCS, a lot of these are going to look very familiar. Um, and the thing that I'll note when you're looking at that table in Appendix A is that it's divided up into three different uh, management system categories. They are practices listed for grazing land, practices listed for orchards and vineyards, and practices listed for cropland. Um, you are eligible to apply for multiple practices under multiple categories. For example, if you have uh, 20 acres of cropland and you also have uh, a 50 acre orchard, those can all be part of the same project. But when you are looking and reviewing the payment rates and the implementation guidelines, be sure you're looking at the right management system category because they do differ slightly. Um, for example, there will be a composting limit for uh, grazing land, for orchards and vineyards, and for crop cropland, and they all might be slightly different. There are also multiple options under uh, each practice or under most practices for how you can do it. Um, and you'll see that in Appendix A as well. Uh, so just really briefly, some examples of the practices that are, uh, I would say, some of the most common practices for people to apply for. Um, compost, you can either apply to, uh, to get purchased compost, so purchasing it from a certified facility or for making compost on farm. Excuse me. 
uh, you can apply for cover cropping, you can apply for hedgerows, mulching, uh, prescribed grazing, nutrient management for fertilizer reduction only, tree shrub establishment, whole orchard recycling, reduced or no-till, and many more. These are just a few of the most common ones we see, so I really encourage you to look at that uh, table with the additional information. Okay, we're gonna go over some of the most basic eligibility requirements. Um, I should have said this at the out, out, you know, at the beginning of the presentation, but one of the things that we want you to walk away with is one, deciding whether or not applying for healthy soils this year is a good fit. And that has a lot to do with eligibility. And two, if you've already decided yes, I'm going to go for HSP this year. We hope to just kind of set you up so that you can uh, so that you can prepare yourselves for the application period in a really efficient and accurate way. Um, as I mentioned, the application period this year is uh, January 22nd through February 9th. Uh, so that's only about three weeks, which is significantly less time than people usually have. Uh, so best case scenario, we highly recommend uh, you start getting ready before January 2nd. So when that application portal opens, you've got your information and you can just plug it in and apply. So eligibility requirements. Eligible applicants are over 18. Uh, they are California farmers, rancher, ranchers, agricultural businesses, nonprofit ag organizations, um, or California Native Americans. Cannabis cultivators are not eligible to, to apply, but hemp, hemp cultivators are eligible. There's no minimum acreage for HSP application. Does not matter if you have a quarter acre field that you want to plant a cover crop on. The only requirement there is that the greenhouse gas reduction estimate, which will happen through the replan tool, which we'll demo later, it can't be negative. So if it's a negative number, CDFA is not gonna give you money, but it's pretty unlikely that it will be a negative number. Um, so no minimum acreage. And uh, applicants applying for an HSP project on leased land must have agreement from the landowner. And CDFA provides a really basic template um, to get uh, an agreement or permission from, from the landowner. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that stipulation later. And the maximum uh, grant award, we already mentioned this, but is $100,000 per unique tax ID number or social security number. So to apply for healthy soils, you can either have a tax ID number, a federal, federally recognized tax ID number or a social security number. Um, and each one of those is associated with, um, with a single application. So for example, you cannot submit three applications under the same tax ID number, or social security number. They will only allow you to submit one. Um, and we'll talk more about what that means for potentially applying to later opportunities such as the block grant in a little while. Um, so, more eligibility requirements. Uh, previous Healthy Soils grant recipients cannot implement the same practice on the same field uh, that have, has been funded previously. So for example, if I have a 50 acre orchard and last year in 2023, I received an HSP grant to apply uh, a bunch of compost and I apply this year in 2024, to apply the same practice on that same field, CDFA will not fund it. I can apply to uh, put compost on a different orchard block that is not the same field, or I can apply to do a different practice. So if I want to add, say, cover crops to where I previously put compost, great. But you can't basically do a repeat of what you were funded last year. Um, or previous years. There's a little asterisk here because there is um, there is a an added uh, I guess detail that CDFA has 
um, has shared this year. And that is if a farm has changed ownership. So let's say I, this year I bought, uh, I bought a farm that had previously gotten an HSP grant and I wanted to do the exact same thing they did because I am a new owner, CDFA will allow new landowners to do the same practice on the same field because they're trying to encourage uh, farmers and ranchers to get involved in this program, right? So I'm a, I would be a new person, uh, a new person, a new applicant to HSP, even though it's on a piece of land that's gotten a, that's gotten a grant in the past. We'll talk a little bit more about that later as well. Um, HSP awards may be combined with other funds for the same overall project, such as USDA EQIP, but HSP funds cannot pay for the same activities as another grant. So an example of this would be, let's say you have a large farm and you're trying to do uh, a large riparian restoration project. Um, you have a USDA EQIP grant that's going to get you two thirds of that planted, but you've got another third of riparian area, you can apply to HSP to pay for that remaining third. You cannot apply uh, for HSP to pay for the same project, the same activities and implementation as another grant, but you can use it as like an add-on, if that makes sense. Um, that said, HSP awards cannot be used as a cost share for any of the following programs. So HSP demonstration grants, other HSP incentive grants, and HSP block grants. This is basically saying CDFA is only going to pay for your project one time. Um, it's You can't pay for it through various, their, uh, through multiple grant opportunities that they have. Those are all CDFA grant opportunities. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about what the application review process and uh, is this year, as well as the priorities that have been set by CDFA. So um, this is, I think, particularly important for folks in deciding uh, whether to apply for this particular solicitation that's opening in January 22nd, or to say, wait and work with a block grant organization. Um, and it's also just good to know how CDFA is actually going to be prioritizing these applications this year in particular. So they will be reviewing in order of priority level. Uh, the first priority level is applications benefiting socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers, which they've essentially identified as BIPOC farmers and ranchers. Um, and also applications benefiting priority populations. So priority pop populations is uh, a demographic identifier that's, that is location-based. Um, and that will be automatically identified in the REAM plan tool when you do it. So in the replan tool, when you look up your APN number or your address number for your farm and you start mapping it out, it's going to tell you whether or not you're in a priority population. So it's not anything you need to look up on your own. Um, the second priority for 2024 will be first time applicants. Uh, important uh, distinction here. They mean people that have not been awarded before. If you've applied before, but your application got rejected for whatever reason, you are still considered a first time applicant. It's just people, they want to, uh, we, they want the program to benefit people who have not received funding from HSP before. Uh, third priority is the applications with multiple practices. And within that one practice can't be more than 80% of the grant budget. So for example, if you want to combine compost and cover cropping by multiple practices, they mean that you can't do 95% compost and 5% uh, cover cropping because that's not an even enough uh, uh, combination to make it multiple practices. 
Uh, and finally, all other applications that don't meet criteria one through three. So everybody else. Uh, within each level of prioritization, applications for projects in counties that are not being served by the regional HSP block grants will be reviewed first. So again, uh, we'll talk in a few minutes about what the HSP block grants are, but essentially they're regional, uh, they're regional block grants that are going to be providing HSP incentives to farmers and ranchers in a particular region. And that's going to be happening through organizations other than CDFA. Um, so CDFA is basically saying, if you are a farmer or rancher that resides in a county that's not covered by one of those other grants, CDFA is going to prioritize you because they know that you probably won't be able to do an HSP block grant. So this is kind of the traditional CDFA application process that's coming up on January 22nd is your, your best chance to get an HSP grant. Okay, um, additional uh, changes to the 2024 HSP incentives program. So for those of you that are familiar with HSP, um, there have been a number of recommendations that have come from technical assistance providers and farmers and ranchers, and um, and CDFA has responded to some of these. So this is these are some of the changes CDFA has made um, to the program, kind of in general. So as I mentioned, it's been going on since 2017. There's been a number of changes. So these are the 2024 changes. Um, First off, in eligibility, if you are leasing land, but your lease is less than three years, you can get a written statement from the landowner that lease renewable will be discussed in good faith. And as I mentioned, CDFA provides a template for this. So um, to break this down a little bit, for those farmers that don't have a land tenure, uh, past one or two years, but say they re renew their lease every two years, they can still be eligible to get an HSP grant. And what CDFA is asking is a, to have a written statement from your landowner that says, yes, our lease agreement is only two years, but we will discuss re lease renewal in good faith at the end of this lease and I support this project. Um, so that was, uh, I think, an important change for those folks that um, have shorter have shorter leases. Um, additionally, previous HSP grant recipients can't get funding for the same practice on the same field, but again, a new landowner may be eligible to implement the same practice on the same field previously funded. Um, so. As I mentioned earlier, if you're a new landowner, but you want to essentially do the same thing the previous landowner did, you can actually do that. Um, you will have to submit an additional form with your application that will probably demonstrate uh, that you are a new landowner on what has been a previously funded uh, piece of land. So uh, practice changes, wood chip mulching, and this is only wood chip mulching, not there's there's mulching practice for multiple different kinds of mulches, but just for wood chip mulching, CDFA has changed this from an annual practice that you have to apply three times over three years to a one-time implemented practice. So instead of having to apply wood chips every single year to the field in your project um, where you got funding to apply wood chip mulches, you just do one big application, uh, which will hopefully really be a labor saver for a lot of people. Um, another practice change for 2024, whole orchard recycling um, has removed a requirement. So they have removed this following requirement uh, following wood chip incorporation, land must be fallowed or replanted with trees within three years. So basically, they're they're just saying just do the whole orchard recycling. 
whether or not the land is either fallowed or replanted with trees within three years is kind of up to the farmer now. It's not a requirement is our understanding. Um, and finally, uh, there are some additional clarifications around who you can get, who you can purchase uh, compost for, uh, compost from, excuse me. So if you are applying to get a compost project grant, uh, there's additional information about who is eligible for you to purchase that compost from. Okay. Uh, the next section of changes are in the application and review process. So first off, conservation plans, which are actually part of a part of the NRCS program, those are no longer included in the application. They used to be optional. They've just taken that out. A technical review will no longer be part of the process. And instead, the scoring criteria change from a numeric score to pass fail. So this is strictly a pass fail uh, application now, which theoretically should mean it will be easier for your application to get approved so long as the information is accurate. Um, and the, as I mentioned earlier, the applications will be reviewed and awarded according to these new priorities, right? So uh, the, these particular priorities are new in 2024. And I, I meant, went over those earlier, so we'll skip ahead. Okay, so um, components of the application. Um, there are two main components of the application. Uh, well, first off, I'll just say the, the application is gonna happen uh, through an online portal called Amplifund. For those of you who have submitted HSP applications in the past, this is totally new. Everyone is going to have to make a brand new account, start an application for the first time. This portal is not yet live. Um, but what we have done is we have uh, downloaded CDFA's preview application questions. Uh, we actually put them into a Google Doc that you can download as a Word document. And we highly encourage you to go ahead and get that document download it into a Microsoft Word doc or make a copy of a Google doc, whatever you want to do, and use that to start collecting the information you're going to need. Um, because this application period is so short, it's only three weeks, ideally you have just about all the information you're going to need for your application before the application period even opens. Um, so use that preview of applications questions document to use that to prepare yourselves. You can also kind of collect questions for a technical assistance provider there, and that will be a really easy way uh, to get any clarity that you need on your application. The other main component of uh, the application is CDFA's replan tool. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar, this is a project design tool that you use online um, it essentially uses Google Maps to zero into uh, the location of the farm or ranch that it, you are looking to have an HSP grant for. And it allows you to draw a map around the fields that where you are going to do the practices, where you're applying to do the practices. And based on the maps that you draw and the information about how you will do the practice, um, it's going to give you a lot of information. It's going to tell you uh, what the what your budget is likely going to be because it's it's establishing the acreage, for example. So if you draw uh, a field where you're going to apply cover crops and you and you enter that in, it's going to calculate how much you would get paid for that. Um, it's also going to tell you whether or not you are in a priority population. Um, it's going to tell you how many acres you've drawn. Um, and it will essentially, so you will, you will, you will go through the replan tool online, and I'm going to do a demonstration in just a minute. Um, and when you are done, you will download two things. And I'll show you where on the replan to download them. It's pretty obvious. You will download a PDF 
as well as an Excel file. And these two documents will give you all of the information that you need to fill out section two of the online application in the Amplifun application portal. Um, so what we highly recommend in terms of doing your actual application, you can start with the replan tool first. Um, essentially, once you have your replan tool set um, and you have, um, and you have gone through the preview of application questions to fill in the additional information that the application is asking for, you have most of what you're, you'll need. Um, so one of the things that we mention is that the replan tool is live now. Anyone can use it. Um, the application portal is still not open, but you can start your replan tool design. Um, and what I would do is I, I would encourage folks to go ahead and kind of familiarize yourselves with it. You will notice if you're doing any practice that requires any kind of planting, it's gonna ask you what species you're gonna plant. So you will need to do a little bit of homework before you can really finalize your replant tool, but you can at least start um, seeing what is available and how it works. Um, and hopefully that makes your uh, application a lot more speedy. Um, and so last thing is, if you do want to edit anything in your replan tool, say you want to actually make the field smaller than you initially uh, designed for your compost application, you need to make it smaller for whatever reason, you can edit your own replan tool online by clicking the link on the replan PDF that you download. Um, so it should be easy enough. One of the ways that edits in replan tools do come up is if uh, applications get rejected because the acreage accidentally goes into the road or it overlaps with, you know, kind of where the house is or anything like that, you will need to edit that so it's just in the field where um, the applicate or the practice will be happening. Um, Okay, so with that, I am going to um, I'm going to switch over my screen here um, to replan tool, and we're going to do a little bit of a demo. All right, and just as a reminder, please uh, drop in any questions and answers. Um, as they come up, um, so we can organize them on our end. Okay. So, um, it's a little hard to see on my end, but I'm gonna, Emily, if, if it doesn't look good, let me know. Um, but I think I, I think I am sharing what I want to be sharing. Okay, so this is CDFA's HSP replan tool. Um, and what you will see here is on the, uh, on the right hand side, you've got an address finder, an APN number, you can put in your county. Um, so this is what you're gonna use to basically find uh, the farm or ranch that you are including in your application. I have just kind of like a demo random spot here that we're going to look at together. And over here on the left hand side, it, it basically explains, you know, this is replan tool, you'll be using it for your application, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it says right here, if you wish to apply for Healthy Souls grant funding, you need to download both the PDF and Excel of your work to complete this, uh, complete your application. So we'll go through it uh, with a brief example and we will um, do just that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna select the grant program. What we are talking about is an incentives grant program. And so now it says start by zooming your desired location or typing in an address. I've already got my address ready to go here. 
Um, and there's some additional layers I won't go into, but this is, the layers show you where priority populations are, for example, but that will also be included automatically in the report you download. So I find that, you know, they might be interesting to look at, but I don't find them um, uh, necessary to at least get started. Um, so in this block of land, I see both cropland and orchard. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll use an orchard for as an, an example. Let's, let's pull one of these orchards over here. I'm gonna zoom in and hopefully you can see this on my screen as well. Okay, I've zoomed in there. I've got my eye on this orchard here. So let's say we want to do um, we want to do a cover crop in this orchard. It's going to automatically ask you, is the practice currently being implemented or was it implemented in the field in the previous year? So if I planted, it's, uh, it's January now. So if this past fall, I planted a cover crop in this same orchard, this field is not applicable, but I did it. So I'm going to say no. And once I say no, it's gonna say select an implementation. It's gonna give me a few options. I can do uh, a legume mix or a non-legume cover crop mix. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I want um, to plant some legumes. And what is the payment scenario? Am I gonna do just one species or I'm gonna do multiple species? So. Again, these are the payment rates right here. This is what you're also going to see in Appendix A with all of the practices. So for one species, they'll give you $122 per acre. For two species or for multiple species, they'll give you $153 per acre. I'm going to go with multiple species because I like to build a little biodiversity in my soil here. And it says, this practice will be implemented project years one through three, which means I have to plant a cover crop three times. Um, select where the practice will be implemented. So uh, one nice thing for orchards is they have an automatic calculation. Since this is an orchard, I'm going to just plant it in the middle. For those of you that are able to do a full broadcast planting, in your entire orchard or just the uh, just like a field. Uh, so for example, if you're planting cover crop as part of your annual crop rotation, uh, you do entire field acreage. But for an orchard or a vineyard, I'm gonna put an alley. Now it's gonna ask me to define my field. Um, so first it's gonna say, you know, do you wanna give it a name? I'll just go with field one, that's fine with me. Um, and now it's gonna tell me that I can uh, click start drawing and it will allow me to draw a field. Um, and it says here, if, if there are any misalignment errors between parcel boundaries and imagery base map, you should use the parcel boundary. So that's referring to the APM, right? The assessor parcel number. Okay, so I'm gonna start drawing. And now once I click that button, I'm gonna move over here to the map and it's gonna give me this nice little plus sign that wasn't here before. So I'm gonna start right at the edge of my, uh, my parcel boundary here, which is also the edge of this orchard. And I'm just gonna draw the best I can. As you'll see in a minute, that you can edit this after the fact. This is a, somewhat square field. Uh, some fields are not square at all. And luckily this tool will allow you to account for that. So this little blip, for example, I'm gonna do a little diagonal run here and go straight up here. Now, this yellow line is where I have drawn my map for, my, for this particular field. If I'm unhappy with it, I can say either delete field drawing and redo it, or I can say edit the drawing. I'm gonna show you the editing because this is nice, especially for fields that are not square or rectangular. So when I click edit, I can move any of these in whichever way I want. And that will help me, especially 
draw on fields that are more difficult shapes, more difficult polygons. For now, I think that looks okay. So I'm gonna say save. Um, and this next section is also new this year. And it says uh, that a field should not include any semi-permanent or permanent structures. And it's giving me an option to add a cutout. So an example would be is if I had a, you know, if I had an irrigation pump area or I had a, a shop or a package, uh, a packaging shed right here, I could add a cutout. So just to guide, let, let's just pretend there's a building over here in this corner and it's gonna allow me to add a cutout. So each time I click, it's gonna create a point so let's just pretend this is my uh, shed area. And now it's gonna, basically it's gonna subtract that from your acreage. Um, since that's not actually a thing, I'm gonna delete it. Okay. All right. So here I have my field and it says review the parcel numbers in field. This is the APN number. Um, you should all, part of your homework for HSP is looking up what the APN numbers for your various fields are and making sure they line up with your records. It's also going to tell you how many acres this is. So this is a 20.3 20 acre field, but the practice implementation is only 14.2 14 acres because this is a cover crop only being planted in the alleys of the orchard. Okay. It says this field has 20.3 acres and parcels within California, et cetera, et cetera. And right here, it says this field is not included, is not located in a community included under AB 1550 low income communities or SB 535 disadvantaged communities. When they ask, is your farm or ranch located in a priority population, this is what they are talking about. So the answer for this particular field in my application is no, it is not. And that will be made clear in the print on as well. Now, uh, we haven't gotten to this, but part of Healthy Soils is that you have to do a soil sample uh, before implementation and each year after you've implemented the practice. And it's gonna ask me how many. Um, so CDFA has some requirements on how many per field. This is a 20 acre field. So I think we could probably get away with just one soil sample. And that's going to automatically add that to your budget, which is really nice. Now, it's going to say provide prior and proposed crops. Um, so my prior crop is almonds, let's say and interproposed crop almonds. So obviously, if you have uh, annual cropland, this is gonna be different. Um, but for those uh, perennial growers, this is just gonna be the same. Now it's gonna say select species to plant. This is the part that, you know, play around with replant tool, but then do your homework on what you actually wanna plant. Maybe talk to your local seed dealer, see what they have, see what would be a good fit for um, for your particular field. Um, CDFA does try to kind of help you out here by asking you what your priorities are. This is based on a tool called Calflora. Um, let's say I want to boost up my nitrogen in this particular orchard. So it's gonna give me a whole bunch of legumes. But again, I do recommend talking to your seed dealer, look at maybe what you've done in the past, if you've gone grown cover crops and see what has worked well. Uh, for the kit, for the um, purpose of this one, I'm going to say I want to do a mix of a bell bean. And I would like to, uh, let's see. Another thing to note is that some of these are summer annuals and some of these are winter annuals and they're not telling you which, which is also a good reason to do your homework. Um, okay, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do, uh, yeah, 
field pea, bell bean, and maybe I'll throw in some, maybe I'll throw in some common vetch. Okay, though that's three species. Um, I've asked to do a multiple species cover crop, so that should be fine. Um, and now it's gonna show me what costs um, are based, based on the information that I entered. Um, it's telling me I entered 14.2 practice implementation acres. Again, that's the actual planting of the cover crop because it's in the alleys. We have the payment rate per acre per year, and it's automatically calculating that cost for me. And then it's adding in uh, the fact that I said I'm doing one soil sample. And I say, great, okay, uh, good amount of money to do to do cover cropping on a 20 acre field, I'm gonna save that. So if that is the only thing I'm gonna do for this project, I'm gonna click finish. But if there's another practice or another field I want to add to my, pro my project, I just click add new practice up here. And then I go through the same thing again. Let's say I also wanna put uh, compost on this orchard of mine. I have not done it in the last year, so we should be good to go. And here are the here are the breakdowns, examples of the different ways you can do composting. So they differ by your carbon and nitrogen ratio. And they also differ by, are you going to purchase it or are you going to actually produce it on your farm? Uh, if it's the latter, well, if any of these, do a little homework on what makes sense, what C to N ratio makes sense for your particular scenario. And if you are planning on producing compost yourself, uh, you probably want to do a little homework on whether that's something that uh, will work out on your particular farm. To keep it easy, I'm going to say, oh, since I put it in nitrogen cover crop, I'm going to do kind of a higher carbon to nitrogen uh, ratio, I'm just going to buy some compost, make it really simple. Now it's asking me the payment scenario. The payment scenario is going to be based on how many tons per acre I am going to apply. So it's going to, and it's going to give me an upper limit. CDFA is not going to pay for you uh, to go over eight tons per acre for this particular CD and ratio. I'm going to say I want all the compost I can get. So I'll go with eight tons and it's going to ask me, is this uh, a new field, draw a new field, which is automatically going to call field two, or is it the same field? I'm going to say it's the same field. Choose existing field. Now it's going to give me an option. Oh, there's my field one. Okay, now I've got compost and cover crop in my field. I don't need to edit it because the compost is going in the same spot as the cover crop. I don't need to add any cutouts. And it's gonna, again, give me a review of the information. This is the same 20.3 acre field. Um, again, this is not in a priority population area. It's gonna ask me how many soil samples I want. Uh, there's already one in there, which it should be sufficient for compost as well. So I'm going to leave that at one. And it's going to, again, tell me, you know, ask me to provide the prior uh, and the proposed crops. So that's not changing because this is an orchard. And now when I review costs, it's going to calculate my compost. Um, oh, it's going to. It's going to calculate all of my costs here. So let's go ahead and save, and we'll, I bet we'll see more of a breakdown here. Oh, here we go. So we've got $6,500 for cover crop, $31,000 for compost application, and we've got my one soil sample. And now I've got a, an HSP incentives grant proposed budget for $38,000. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, so since I just have this one field I want to do this on, I'm going to say finished. And now, uh, one thing it's going to ask you is whether or not, so for folks that 
do not get a Healthy Souls grant, CDFA is offering to add you to their registry. You can read more about this in the RGA, but it's basically saying, if you don't get an HSP grant this year, we can save your information and then let you know if there's a, additional grant opportunities for the same project you've applied for. Um, I'm gonna say, no, I don't need to be, I don't need to be um, on this registry. I just want this particular grant. Okay, now this is the download PDF and download Excel I told you all about. You're gonna wanna do both. So, and once you have that information, it's gonna tell you, um, it's gonna have all the information, much of the information you're gonna need on section two of your application. So, um, I'm going to quit sharing here and I'm going to have that be the end of our demonstration. Hopefully that gave you an idea, a little bit of an idea of how this read plan tool works. Um, but again, you know, just a quick overview, start with dropping in your address or your APN. If you need to move around to find where you are, you can do that. Um, and then you can use these Zoom buttons to go in. These blue lines are APN numbers. So those are, those are already alone, th those blue lines alone are telling you uh, where the APNs are, which is really nice. Okay, so we're gonna stop the share there. And I'm going to share my, go back to my PowerPoint here. I have just a few more slides and we're gonna open it up to questions. So thank you all for being patient with this process. I know it's a lot of information, um, but we're doing our best here. Okay, so we did our replan tool demo. Uh, please go and play with it all, you know, with your own information here. Um, and, and hopefully that can familiarize yourself. Uh, you can familiarize yourself with the tool. Okay, so let's say you are successful, you get an HSP grant, what is going to happen? I'm not gonna go into super long detail here because this is a ways out, but I just wanted to let people know because part of deciding whether or not to apply for a Healthy Soils program with CDFA is understanding what it is you're signing up to do. Um, so wanted to include a, a little bit of information here. So what will happen is uh, CDFA will inform you that you will be awarded uh, an HSP grant um, and you will go into a, a grant agreement, a signed grant agreement with CDFA. Or if later on in the year you are applying for HSP through a block grant organization, you will have an, a grant agreement with that organization. We'll talk a little bit more about who those folks are in, in just a minute. And depending on the practice, implementation must either uh, happen every year of the three-year grant. So for example, the project that I just, the pretend project I just did in replan, if I'm spreading compost, that means I'm spreading compost every year. So if I get, uh, let's say I apply in January and CDFA comes to me in May and says, hey, Sarah, congratulations, you got an HSP grant, we sign our agreement. That means um, within year one, so in the fall or in what, whatever time frame CDFA is requiring, I have to spread my compost or plant my cover crop in year one of the grant, year two of the grant, year three of the grant. If you are doing a practice that is a either a one-time practice like wood mulching or a whole orchard recycling, or you're planting a woody uh, planting like a hedgerow or a windbreak, these are one-time implementation practices. So Basically, on the replant tool, it will ask you if you put in, I'm going to plant a hedgerow, it's going to say which year are you going to plant the hedgerow? And it's going to say year one, two, or three. So you can say, oh, I want all the time I, in the world to plan my 
uh, hedgerow and get all the labor and irrigation system set up I need. So do it in year three. That's totally fine. Um, this is a little picture pulled from the request for grant application, an example of what they could see being kind of like, what do you mean by this project year one, two, and three? Uh, so what they mean is that project year one will be the date of agreement, uh, the date of the grant agreement ex execution through uh, June 30th, 2025. So this is an example. This is not the actual See if they had, this isn't the sort of finalized date. So keep an eye out for that, but it's probably gonna be something close to this. Um, year two will be uh, a year from then. And then year three will be the final year. So you can kind of see how the, this timeline lines up. Something very important, HSP will not cover any costs incurred either before the grant term or after it ends. So CDFA and you are going to sign an agreement that says my grant starts on uh, June 30th of 2024 and it ends on June 30th of 2027. If you bought compost on May 15th of 2024, they are not gonna pay for it. If you bought compost two weeks after your grant agreement ended, they are not going to pay for it. Very important. You cannot get paid for something you've already purchased before the grant agreement or anything you've kind of already done. Um, so don't buy your practice materials until it's within your grant start date. Very important. Okay, what else we got here? Okay. Soil testing. So this came up in um, in the replan tool, but you are required that to conduct a soil test for organic matter, just for organic matter. You can add additional things to your soil test if you want to know that. Um, but this is the information CDFA wants, and you have to do it before practice implementation. So I've got to go out there and collect a soil sample before I plant my cover crop, before I spread my compost. And then I have to do it one year later after one year of practice. Um, and then two years later, and then three years later, the third soil sample that I take out there and submit to a lab is going to be outside of the grant agreement because it's gonna be after that third year of implementation. So it's kind of a cost share, but rest assured, soil testing uh, for organic matter is quite inexpensive and it's a beneficial thing to do and um, know about your fields. Uh, just a quick tip, soil testing in general, you wanna do it in the same way each time. You wanna send it into the same lab each time and you wanna do it the same time of year each time. So don't do, you know, in year one, you're not going to do it once in April and then once in October and then once in August, because that's not going to give you very good data. Okay, how does reimbursement work with HSP grants? So at this point in time, um, I say at this point in time because different uh, solicitations have done this differently, but for 2024, my read on this is that CDFA is going to do yearly invoicing. That means following practice verification, um, you will be reimbursed for your practice. What does that mean? Okay, so farmers and ranchers have to pay for practice materials up front. If you are buying compost, that last project that I put out was, uh, you know, over thirty thousand dollars worth of compost. I've got to fork out thirty thousand dollars to buy my compost, and then I'm going to document that I got my compost. I'm going to have all of my receipts. I'm going to have the appropriate documentation that CDFA is requiring from the compost facility, and I'm going to have to do uh, geotagged photos of the compost being spread in my orchard. After that has all been verified by CDFA, I will get reimbursed for that practice, not before. 
Um, so really important distinction here in terms of the size of your project, in terms of uh, where you want to do this, um, what practices you want to do, how big of a budget you're willing to build. Um, uh, there are some technical assistance providers that essentially recommend um, that you don't think of HSP money as, you know, free money from the state government. Use it to support practices that you are already interested in doing that will hopefully uh, reduce the financial burden of doing those practices and help you out. Okay, so uh, yearly invoicing, and I'll note that the reimbursement payments are based on CDFA's payment rates per acre. They are not based on how much you actually pay for the compost or the cover crop or the wood mulch or any materials. These are based on the payment rates that CDFA establishes that are in Appendix A. So if you happen to buy, uh, if you happen to pay for cover crop seed that is more expensive than the payment rate, you, you're gonna eat that cost. If it's less expensive, you get a little extra boost that you can apply to labor. Um, same for every practice. So save all of your receipts, save your documentation. You're gonna provide that as proof that you did the practice, not for reimbursement to be exactly tied to those costs. Feel free to ask questions about this because it's a little bit nuanced. Um, okay, and CDFA does say that grant recipients may be eligible for an advanced payment of up to 25% of the total grant award to begin the project. So in the case of this grant, where I think it was, um, you know, let's say $38,000, I can say, wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of upfront costs for me. I can get up to 25%, I can request up to 25% of that total budget um, for an advance payment. It's up to CDFA whether or not they grant that to you. Um, and finally, project verification, we talked about that, but essentially this is happening through remote evaluation. Um, CDFA uh, is mostly requiring geotagged photos, but they've also done you know, kind of like video calls with farmers to say, kind of like show me that field and that sort of thing. Um, and for the actual project verification details, what's required, um, it's included in Appendix A. It's also included in the replan PDF that you download after you do your replan tool. It basically says, this is how we're gonna verify that you do this practice. Okay, a couple more slides here, hang in there. Um, okay. So what happens if my application is rejected or I run out of time? Um, hopefully this will not happen, but if it does, uh, rest assured, there are some, uh, there are some different options for you here. First off, if, if your application is rejected, it's probably because of a small error in acreage or you went over an APN line accidentally in your replan tool, you will receive an, an email from CDFA telling you what the error is, and then you, you can go in and fix it and you can resubmit it. And TE providers can help you do this. Um, I do want to name, excuse me, this year uh, resubmissions are going to be tricky because it's a very short timeline when your application, if your application gets rejected and you fix it and resubmit it, you do not get your same place in line. So if you were the second person to apply for HSP in 2024, your application gets rejected, regardless of the reason, you're gonna, you are then going to be in line whenever you resubmit it. The priorities will be the same of socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers, first time applicants, multiple practices, you will still be ranked based on those priorities, but you will likely be behind a bunch of other people. And the way that this program works is that within those priorities, more or less, it's a first come first serve basis. So 
at some point the money's going to run out or the application period is going to end on February 9th. I'll just name my prediction is the money is going to run out actually before February 9th. So again, start working on your applications now. Okay, if you run out of time either to resubmit or in the first place, maybe you have a more complicated project. It just takes too much planning. You don't have enough time to squeeze your application in this three week application period. I would highly consider looking into the HSP block grants. So basically what this means is you can get an HSP incentives grant, but rather than being in a contract, rather than applying directly to CDFA and being in a contract with CDFA, you would apply directly to a grant recipient organization. So an example of this is um, that for example, if you if you were in the Southern Sacramento region, uh, we some of our partners there are working with the Solano County Farm Bureau, and they have a block grant. Uh, they have a block grant for HSP. That means later this year they will be opening up their own application process. It's the same application. It's the same HSP application, but you will be applying through them rather than through CDFA. And that would mean that theoretically you would have more time to get ready for that. I'll note that you that that these block grant uh, application processes will are gonna differ. This is a pilot program. We kind of have it's brand new. So there's not a whole lot I can kind of predict how it's gonna go, but they are going to open after this first CDFA application period has closed. CDFA does not want you sending the same application to CDFA and to the block grant in your region because they can't fund you for the same project twice. But if you get rejected, for example, or you run out of time, absolutely you can apply for the block grant. Um, but the block grant is regional. Um, and I, we have linked here and again, you're going to get all of these slides and links and everything. Look and see who in your region is, uh, holding a block grant and see if you know those organizations, see if you know anybody at those organizations, they're going to be listed by organization. And then they're going to include which counties they're working in. And most of the block grants are working in multiple counties. So I recommend looking into this. Um, even if you plan to apply through CDFA, it's a good thing to know about. Okay, lastly, if you hear all of this today um, and decide or do some more research, decide HSP just isn't right for your farm or your ranch, uh, there are other programs out there um, run by CDFA that might be of interest to you. One is the Pollinator Habitat Program there's a lot of overlapping practices here. Uh, so cover crops is covered, hedgerows, and a lot of other pollinator plantings. Um, compost is not included because that's not a pollinator uh, practice at this point. This is a shorter term program. So you really only apply for one year of practice at a time rather than three. And uh, it's, it's a different structure. Again, rather than directly applying through CDFA, you actually apply for uh, apply through one of the organizations that's holding these grants. Um, CAF happens to be working with Pollinator Partnership, which is another agricultural nonprofit that is holding one of these grants to administer funds to farmers. So you can click here or email Pollinator Partnership at this email to learn more about what that entails. So hopefully this, you know, just paints a few options for you. Um, always good to know what your options are. All right, this is the last slide. And this is really just, uh, this is really just to give you a bunch of links that I've already talked about. Uh, just briefly, the, the top one here is going to be your 24, 24 technical assistance providers, figure out who is providing technical assistance, ideally in your area, because if they need to come and, you know, help you out, come out to the farm, it's a lot easier than doing it remotely, though 
many folks do do it remotely. Um, the Healthy Soils Incentives Program website uh, has a lot of resources, and this is also where you are going to go to apply. Uh, this is where the application portal link is, as well as the template for getting permission from your landowner, as well as a number of other important documents like the request for grant applications, et cetera. Preview application questions. Uh, this is something that CAF set up as a Google document. So you can either make a copy of it or you can download it as a Word doc and use it to prepare your application. CDFA's replan tool, which we did a demo of earlier and is live now. Uh, CAF has also set up a Healthy Soils uh, web page as part of our website. Um, and we've put together a number of resources to kind of help people think through, do I apply? Is this right for me? What are the requirements? Um, and there's also some other uh, kind of resources like the application questions to help you get going. Uh, list of 2024 HSP block grants. Uh, so th these are the organizations and entities I've been talking about that are part of this new kind of pilot program CDFA has put together to try a kind of a second way to administer the Healthy Soils Incentives Program grants. Um, so check that out. See, see who is um, holding a block grant for the county that you live in or that you farm or ranch in. Um, and see kind of what makes best sense for you. And uh, and this is a link again to learn more about CDFA's pollinator habitat program. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and ask for questions. Um, again, slides from this presentation are gonna be shared via email with everybody who registered uh, as uh, along with the video it is our hope. Um, if you want to get in touch with us at CAF, um, please send any emails or questions to ecologicalfarming at CAF.org. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share so I can start seeing everybody's questions. Again, um, my apologies for a very long-winded, wordy presentation, but <laughs> hopefully... Uh, Hopefully, uh, it was helpful to you all. Okay. So I'm just going to start pulling up some questions. Okay, first question. It is not clear if one should apply for HSP with CDFA or to a regional block grant or to both. Are the requirements and the application procedures the same? What gives the better chance of getting the grant? The application procedures and the way uh, the grants are implemented in terms of what you can get money for and how you do them on your farm or your ranch, exactly the same, should be exactly the same. Um, in terms of what gives a better chance of getting the grant, um, this is a little bit of a gray area because the HSP block grants have never happened before. So I can't tell you if they'll be easier, if they'll be harder. Um, I can say that I've heard a couple of examples of at the very least, there will be some that will have a longer application period than CDFA's three weeks. So if you were thinking that see, three weeks is not enough time, um, by any stretch of the imagination for you to apply to this program with CDFA, I would lean on a block grant if there's one in your county. And there might be several. There are overlapping uh, block grant organizations and entities. Okay, some organizations already have their HSP block grants open. Can growers apply to both at the same time? Same thing with multiple block grants. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so I looked this up on CDFA's website this morning. This came up in, in a frequently asked question. They say do not apply for the same project to CDFA and different block grants um, 
because you can only apply, you can only get funded one time for the same, the one project, um, they are asking, and I don't know to what degree they're going to look for replete applications. I have no information on that, but they are telling us and everyone interested, please do either or. Either apply for CDFA uh, in this upcoming application period or apply for a block grant. Um, I will say for those block grants that are not open yet, some of them, they have control over their own timing. If, for example, uh, you get in touch with a blank block grant um, organization and their information is online. So theoretically, you could reach out to them now and say, hey, what's your plan with this block grant? What's the timing going to be? There are going to be some that are actually waiting until CDFA is done with their process to open theirs to minimize the overlap. If that's the case, you know, I think there will be instances where people uh, are not successful in this first solicitation with CDFA and know they're not successful and then can uh, use that application with a block grant. But you can't have multiple applications open with multiple entities. CDFA will not like that. That's our understanding at this point. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about eligibility um and first question is are new practices tied to landowners or to individual fields new practices are tied to fields um so for example if you got an hsp grant last year uh to do a hedgerow along one side of your farm. That's considered a field, by the way. Um, and this year you wanna extend it, that would be a new field. So same practice, new field. Um, so I think maybe this person is also asking about this little kind of distinction. If there's a new landowner, if there's a new landowner, so a piece of land where an HSP project has happened in the past, has been funded. Let's say somebody did spread compost on an annual vegetable field. And then that farm changes hands. So there's a new landowner. The new landowner can put compost on that same field, but only because it's a change in ownership. The vast majority of the time, that's not what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is you can either apply for doing an HSP practice on a new field where you have not done that practice before, or you can apply to do a practice that you haven't done before, right? So in either case, there has to be basically new acreage of implementation, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, when we say you can't have already implemented the practice in the previous year, does that mean implemented the practice through HSP or implemented the practice period? It is the latter. Um, but it's just this last year. So um, it used to be that you had to give a management history for the previous three years. And if I planted a cover crop two years ago, I couldn't get HP, HSP number uh, money. Uh, this time around, it's saying, we want to know, did you do this practice in this field in the previous year? Doesn't matter if it's through HSP or you just did it on your own. If you did it, it's not considered a new practice, and so they won't give you funding. You could do it in a different field. You can do a new practice that you didn't do in the previous year. All of those are okay. If the last time you did a cover crop was five years ago, green light, no problem. Um, are we able to apply for cover crop funding if we implemented the practice? Absolutely. So one year. So and you take, you know, there there's not a um, there's not a super detailed interpretation of it. So what I would do is when you're sitting down with that question in replan tool and it says, have you implemented this in the previous year? Take 
whatever the date is that you're working on that and go a year backwards. If you've done it in the pre one previous year, not eligible. But if you did it before that, fine, no problem. Okay, here's a uh, question about organic certification. Um, let's see. Would I be eligible for HSP grant if I'm just starting out? For example, we haven't sold our olives yet. The land has not been worked in the entire eight years we've lived there and was not worked prior to that for an unknown time. Um, this might be a little bit of a gray area. So as long as it's agricultural land, if it was fallowed, it should be, it should be eligible. If it was previously not agricultural land, but is being converted to agricultural land, that might be a harder sell to CDFA. Something I'm just going to name before I forget. There is currently a um, there is currently a questions period open with CDFA right now, so you can email them questions um, that I can't answer here or that come up in the next uh, I think week or so, uh, or maybe just a few days. You can email them questions and they will publicly answer them uh, in written form. Okay. Are women and or beginning farmers considered socially disadvantaged by the state and federal definitions being used for the purposes of this grant? No, um, women and beginning farmers are not included in that categorization. I'm working with a farmer who was awarded an HSP in 2022, but did not do anything to meet the requirements of the composting. Since he did not get any money reimbursed, can he be, can he put in for a separate HSP on the same property or does it need to be a different parcel? Hmm. So it sounds, this is a little bit of a fuzzy question, but it sounds like maybe they wanted to do, they wanted to do compost and they got a grant to do compost, but it hasn't done anything to meet the requirements. Since he did not get the money reimbursed, can he apply for a separate HSP grant? What I would recommend on this particular case is actually getting in touch with CDFA because if it's a 2022 grant, that grant is still fully active because these are three-year grants. So 2022 grant, would be ending in 2025, I would think, which probably means you cannot apply for the same practice on the same field. Um, my question that I would bring up to that person would be to work with CDFA on like, okay, I'm like way behind on my composting, which I wanted to do as part of my grant. What can I do now to implement some of that compost and get maybe some of it paid for by CDFA through the existing grant. And then I would think about if I'm gonna do an HSP, another HSP grant, one, is it feasible? And two, uh, how can I do it on a different parcel uh, or how can I do a different practice? Hopefully that helps. If I've never had an HSP grant, but I had a grant from a compost connector, I can still apply for compost. Um, you can, but it needs to be on a field where you have not done compost application in the previous year. So if your compost connector grant, uh, which is through Zero Food Print, which is for just people to know, if that grant is going on right now and you apply compost on your main field in uh, 2023, and you wanna apply for compost in the same field, but through HSP, that is considered ineligible because it's the same practice within one previous year. Uh, so ideally do it on a different, uh, a different field or a different parcel, or if this happened two years ago, no problem. Okay, first time application status. I had 
an HSP grant in the past for different parcel and crop? Am I still considered a first time applicant for a new parcel and crop? Example, HSP grant passed was an orchard now applying for a different parcel. So in this case, you are not considered a first time applicant because you have been previously uh, awarded a grant, I think. I might double check on that one, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's, because it's gonna tie it, um, the way that CDFA is gonna tie it to your tax ID number. Uh, so I think that's how they're gonna tie it. But I think in that particular case, a new applicant is an applicant who has not received funding from HSP. They don't say specifically uh, that it that it is just about like the same piece of land or the same practice. It's it's tying it to the applicant themselves. Okay, application process is the 2020 is the 25 percent for the advance payment applicable per year or for the total amount uh my read on it and this is just based on my read of the request for grant applications it's for the total amount of the grant so it's something you would propose i think one time at the beginning and you would bring that up in your discussions during the grant agreement process um when CDFA reaches out to you to say, "Hey, you've we've a, we want to award you a healthy soils grant," uh, then that is the time to enter in conversations with you about the twenty five percent advance payment. Um, that is my understanding at this point. Question about selecting the correct management system category. Last time we applied, our technical assistance provider asked us to change to cropland. I don't remember why. I can't locate the definitions for management systems. I see the practice definitions. We have seven acre property planted with five acres of pear trees. Um, so five acres of pear trees should be, that should be classified as an orchard. So any tree or perennial vine crop, vineyard, trees or vineyards, orchards or vineyards or orchards or vineyards, uh, cropland is, that's referring to annual cropland rotations, uh, vegetables, grains, uh, flowers even. Uh, so hopefully that, that clarifies that. For sites under one acre, do we define each bed separately if practices vary? Um, so the, fi the fields, the drawings that you draw in replan um, you should be able to just draw the kind of the whole field. Let's see if practices vary. Okay. Sounds like maybe this person wants to do, may, let's give an example. So, so let's say you have about an acre field or under an acre field. Uh, if you want to do compost, on uh, half of that field, that's where you draw. So you draw basically a field for each practice. Um, and if you want to do mulch on the other half, you would draw a field for that practice of mulch. If you are doing kind of like in every other situation, what you're going to do is you're going to have multiple kind of smaller fields, I guess to the to your point, drawing each bed separately. Um, so I, I guess so. Um, the smaller you zoom in to replan, the smaller the field, the more difficult it can be. Um, so I would maybe try it out a little bit and see if it see how it goes. I do think they've improved this feature, the zoom feature. So it should be more feasible, but it does sound like if there's variability in practices on a really small scale, you're basically going to want to detail that out. Is there a reason to do more or less soil samples? Does doing more or less improve your application's potential of being selected? Um, there are reasons to do more or less soil samples, and those have to do with the accuracy of your soil samples. It will have zero to do with whether or not your application is selected. 
This is a pass fail application. How many soil samples you do and submit. The only reason they're asking that is because they're automatically building in to the budget. So every, every soil sample you do, you get $50 to do it to get soil organic matter, which by the way, doesn't typically cost $50 to do it. So that's nice. Uh, but it's not gonna improve your application. Uh, there's no even score to the applications, it's pass fail. So the, if you wanna do five soil samples, uh, that should be because of differing practices, differing soil types within a field, or if you have a really large field, you're gonna wanna do multiple soil samples. It depends on whether you're doing cropland or uh, orchard or rangeland. And CDFA on their website has recommendations for how to decide. And that's also something uh, a, um, a technical systems provider can help with. Oh, Giselle, thank you. Giselle is dropping in a link to the soil sampling recommendations. So there you go. Look in the chat for that link. Uh, we'll also include it in our email. So please, uh, Emily or Giselle, if you can hang on to that, that'd be great. Do you have any sense as to when the applications will be funded? What's the turnaround time? Um, we do not know. CDFA does not know. They are trying to do it as quickly as possible, but we really don't have any idea, unfortunately. Um, I'm curious, there's a block grant closing on February 27th, and I want to make sure I know about the direct to grower status. Uh, did I get awarded or not? So will you know before February 27th? Um, I think there's a chance you will know, but honestly, I, they're very vague about this um, for good reasons you can imagine. So unfortunately, can't provide a whole lot of information there. My apologies. Uh, on January 2nd, 22nd, what time will one be able to apply? Uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, CDFA has not said actually. My my guess, I mean, my guess would be that they're not gonna open it at 12 a.m. because hopefully CDFA is not up at 12 a.m. fiddling with their grant portal. It is close, I would guess seven or eight a.m. If, if it were me, that's what time I would look. It's gonna close at uh, 5 p.m. on February 9th or whenever funding runs out. If funding runs out on February 1st, grant appli uh, application period will be over. How soon will we have access to this recording? Uh, hopefully in a couple days. Uh, we will send you an email uh, by the end of this week at the very latest with the link to this recording. Uh, we'll probably just put it up on YouTube as well as these slides and uh, all of these other resources we've shared. Okay, uh, we're gonna ask some more questions on technical assistance. Once you once selected, are you assigned a contact to send all voices, invoices, photos, etc.? Uh, yes, that will be discussed with CDFA. Uh, they will give you directions on how to, uh, yeah, submit your geotagged photos and send yearly reimbursements. The yearly reimbursements they will actually ask you for, uh, likely, but they will give you a grant contact at their HSP office. So you should be good there. Okay. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing. Are folks that are a person of color considered to be socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers? The example is they are African, not African-American. And I think CDFA only mentions African-Americans. Um, that is an excellent question. I had the same question actually uh, when I read that. Um, I would add that to CDFA's um, question and answer because, uh, yeah, they the, the language they use are African Americans. I would my my hunch would say yes, and also, uh, yeah, my hunch would say yes, but. That would be a great thing to verify with CDFA 
And that's something that if you send that question to them and they have a link, they have a, a, um, a, an email where you can send questions and they will release the, um, they will publish the answers that would likely benefit more than one person. So please do send that in. Um, my team will also capture that one and, and we will send it in as well. Okay. Is cropland meant to apply for annual crops only? Um, I think cropland is meant as kind of a, a bit of a catch-all for uh, for fields that are not rangeland, so you're not grazing animals on it, you're not uh, growing orchards or vineyards. It's, yeah, annual crops, but can also be, you know, it could be uh, maybe you have a perennial wheat crop, right? Or some kind of a biennial grain uh, or biennial grain, um, but mostly annual crops. Yes. I think, I think hopefully that clarifies, but it's kind of everything else, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Herbaceous plantings of crops. For cover crop and compost, we know that organic seed and compost are a bit more expensive and wanted to know how that would be taken, if that would be taken into account. Unfortunately, that will not be taken into account. So, um that is yeah unfortunately hsp does not award more money uh based on folks having to buy organic seed or compost um so i would just do a little research on a seed dealer um and a compost provider um always makes sense to kind of shop around a little bit in terms of prices and whatnot I grow agave for spirits. Is that considered an orchard since it is a perennial? Um, I would, that's a great question. Um, I would say that would probably be considered cropland. It might not matter a whole lot. So the distinctions have to do with how you list um, your crop and how you list the practices. So for example, rangeland compost it, application rates are different than cropland application rates. Um, my guess is, is cropland, but that it's a, another kind of gray area question I would shoot over to CDFA. Um, but my guess is cropland. Because there are also uh, perennial flowers, right, that are considered part of cropland. Um, okay. I think uh, we have, I think that is all the questions. Um, Emily, can you tell me whether or not that is all the questions? Okay. Seems to be, uh, feel free to pop in any other questions, folks. Yeah, well, maybe I'll just pause for a couple minutes. And um, if you have your, had your question answered, I, I, hope, I hope it's helpful. Um, again, CAF, we are one of many uh, technical assistance providers for the Healthy Souls program. So, um, you know, you're more than welcome to get in touch with us but also do check out who in your region is helping out with this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, they, technical assistance providers in general, um, we are able to, if you have a question that comes up after today, for example, um, you can email those to CDFA. You can also email them to technical assistance providers and we can ask CDFA and not always, but sometimes we actually get an answer a little bit quicker, especially if it's during the application period. Um, okay, there is a link to the list of LeBlanc grants. I just saw that question um, in what we will be sending out, but we can actually, why don't we drop some of these links in, uh, 
in the chat just right now. I can I can drop a few in here. Let me just pull it up. Oh, maybe I can. Okay. So for those, it does sound like people are somewhat familiar with the block grants, uh, which is great because again, this is a pilot program, it's brand new. And each one's gonna be a little bit different as we've already learned. I didn't even know some of them were open. Um, so this would be a good thing for folks to educate themselves on. Um, I'm gonna drop in the chat right now. Oh, Emily did it already, but I'll do it again. So you can click on that uh, link and it will send you to um, a PDF with the list of recipient organizations. Look at the counties they're in. Also, you'll know some of them are uh, they're they're by crop they're by commodity boards. So, like, you know, if you're growing citrus, it's unclear to me whether or not the American Pistachio Board is going to help you get an HSP grant. They might, but I would ask them. Um, another great thing to have um, is. I'm going to find the list of technical assistance providers here so you can check that as well. Is the sweep grant different from HSP even though they cover some of the same things? Sweep is 100% different from HSP. Um, the sweep grant is primarily um, the sweep grant is primarily for irrigation practices. Um, unfortunately, the sweep grant actually had its funding pulled for 2024 due to the budget deficit. So unfortunately, there will not be a sweep solicitation this year so long as we've heard. Maybe maybe they'll figure out somewhere else to get some funding, but, uh, hopefully, hopefully that's the case, but it's a great program. It is pretty different. Healthy Soils is really more focused on um, healthy, yeah, soil health practices primarily. There are still sweet block grants. Thank you, Connor Higgins. I did not know that. Um, okay, so I retract my earlier statement. Apparently, you can still get a sweep grant through one of these block grants. So again, check out that uh, list of block grants, uh, or maybe there might be, let me see, there's probably a different list of block grants uh, for SWEEP. So if you are interested in SWEEP, you wanna look up the SWEEP block grant program. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna drop it in to the chat. Oh, you guys are so fast. You're faster than I am. Okay. Uh, thank you, Hope. That's very helpful. Uh, okay. I'm looking for additional questions. Any additional questions? Uh, what I will say is... Um, that you are welcome to uh, continue sending us questions as they come up. Um, you can send them to ecologicalfarmingcap.org um, and we will continue trying to answer them. And as I mentioned, we will uh, be sending out a recording of this webinar, as well as the slides and all the different resources we talked about. Um, I'm just going to do a call out. I know there's a number of fellow technical assistance providers on this call. If you are one of those people and you would like your information to be included in our follow-up email, please send me a shout and we will include it. 
Um, also, you are more than welcome to share any and all of this information uh, when with with any anyone you think might be interested. This is a yeah, we we are more than happy to share this information, get it out there, help people um, decide whether and how to apply to healthy soils. And um, yeah, we wish you all great luck with it. Um, I'll stay on for a little bit longer and see if there's any additional questions that come up. Um, Emily, I'm gonna keep looking at our, um, our document here. Let's see, I'm wondering if it might be helpful also in the meantime to drop in, um, to drop in the list of technical assistance providers so you can look for one in your area. Also, I'm gonna do a quick plug, uh, my colleague, Dahlia Rodriguez Caspeta will be hosting an information session in Spanish on healthy soils tomorrow. Uh, so for those of you that know any farmers or ranchers that would benefit in having um, an information session as well as a Q&A session in Espanol, please, um, Feel free to email us at ecologicalfarming.cap.org uh, so we can make sure to get them on the list. Um, I can also drop in a link to that Zoom. Actually, Giselle, could you dig that up by chance and drop that into the link, please? Thank you, Elizabeth Garcia. Um, so yeah, for those of you that are looking at the chat, there's a lot of a, a lot of technical assistance providers introducing themselves. Um, the UC ANR Climate Smart Ag team is providing TA along with our wonderful partners. Uh, thank you for dropping that in, Hope Zabronski. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth Garcia from San Diego County RCD. Um, they are also it sounds like working with Zero Foodprint to help with producers in the San Diego region. So you've already got some links just right there. So that's great. Thank you, folks. Much appreciated. Um, in addition, I am going to drop in the link to um, the HSP providers for um, for this next solicitation period. Um, and you'll notice here the different languages that TA providers are providing support in. So, um, so again, please share this knowledge far and wide um, and reach out to your local TA provider if you would like help finding, try, tracking down who those folks are, you can give us a shout and we can help help find them for you as well. Thank you, Giselle. Giselle just uh, dropped in a link for tomorrow's webinar in Spanish, which is essentially gonna be much of the same information, but will be for Spanish speaking farmers and ranchers. Um, thank you, Connor Higgins from Yolo County RCD. Yolo County RCD will also be providing support to folks in Yolo County. So there you go. All right. Well, um, I think we might go ahead and wrap it up there. Um, thanks everyone so much for hanging in there. I know it's a lot of information and uh, hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully the slides will be helpful to review, et cetera. Um, and again, we will send out this recording as well as the PowerPoint and all of these links uh, in really as soon as we can. It's a high priority for us. And uh, get in touch with us if you have additional questions. Um, and best of luck to everyone that decides to apply. 
I probably should have said this before, but by technical assistance provider, we at, at CAF and, and all of these other places that have introduced themselves, the RCDs, um, UC a &R, we also do one-on-one -on -one application assistance. Uh, really should have mentioned that earlier. So if you decide to take on HSP for this next solicitation starting on January 2nd, you're in the middle of your application and you get stuck or you're not sure about something, reach out to someone. There's a lot of help. Um, and yeah, we wish you great success and thanks. Thanks to everyone. All right. Take care.